Hi and welcome to my channel and thank you for being here. Today is a collab with Beauty Beatdown. Make sure you go and check her channel out and yeah she's awesome. She does wrestling, she likes Rocky Horror and she does good makeup reviews and yeah she's fun. So our collab today is going to be answering these questions. There's eight of them. Um, I think Samantha March and Angela Nyquist, I said everything wrong, I'm sure, I'm sorry. Um, but though they came up with this, you know, makeup tag, I guess that would be what you would call it. And we're just going to answer these questions. Question number one is, what mainstream release lived up to the hype most this year? I don't know because I just don't think I follow that stuff well enough. Mainstream hype. Now for me, I would say the most mainstream or viral thing that I got is the KVD Foundation, the Good Apple, and I love that shit. Um, I absolutely love that foundation. I, I will say that you don't get a lot of product. But I love the coverage. I love the packaging. I think that that lived up to the hype. Um, I, I know it went viral. It was really hard to get a hold of after, you know, a little bit of it, like, being released. I think the coverage is fantastic. Um, I don't have any issues with it slipping and sliding on my skin uh, or breaking up. So... I really like it and I think like KVD makes some of my favorite foundations honestly um, when it comes to like full coverage foundations I definitely reach for my KVD foundations I have a few of them in different form formulas and yeah I really like it but yeah I think that, that for me is what lived up to the hype in my opinion what indie release lived up to the hype most this year is KVD indie? I don't know. I don't know if it's indie anymore. Um, I think that I don't have enough things from indie brands that were hyped this year. I uh, This one's really hard for me. Um, again, because I don't buy a bunch of new products and normally I'm buying things that have already not been released but I really think that Haunted European palette from Nomad I don't think it was that hyped but I think it was pretty hyped and I would say that that probably lived up to its hype it looks absolutely phenomenal again like I can't like for sure give you an answer because you know you know, but when I think of hyped makeup and makeup that really made me go, mm, I want that, was that. And all the reviews for it was really good. So I think it probably lived up to its hype. Which release did not live up to the hype? So for me, what did not live up to the hype is that Beauty Bay Wilderness palette. That thing was so fucking hyped. I was super excited for it. Then I got it. And the quality of it, to me, is shit. The greens are fucking awful. I love the shimmers, but out of, like, the six Beauty Bay palettes I have, or how many ever it is, that one was awful. I... Half the palette doesn't work for me, and it's the greens. The color story is beautiful. The shimmers are beautiful, but why are people hyping that up so much? Did they really, like, not have any issues? Why am I having issues? Why am I having issues with that palette? I don't know, but um, I think that that was really hyped up, and I think it sucks, and it's hilarious because it's in a lot of people's top favorite uh, palettes released this year, and I thought it blue uh, um the shimmers are great some of the other mattes in it are okay the greens did not work for me and that just ruined the whole palette what was the biggest curveball curveball i don't know i think the biggest curveball 
as far as releases, hell if I know, but I do think the biggest curveball this year, as far as overhyped makeup, is just that they are, TikTok trends are getting things out of the drugstore and off the market. They'll just do a video and then bam, it's like overhyped and everything is gone and you can't get a hold of it, which I think is really hilarious. And I think that's a big curveball because I never saw TikTok having so much pull in the beauty community. And I feel like TikTok is almost having more pull in the trending things in the beauty community than YouTube. Now, I think that I probably didn't answer this question like the way I should have, um, like makeup releases curveball or anything like that. But I think that was a big curveball. And I also think that the ridiculous amount of nostalgic collabs and food collabs and music collabs, like, and game board collabs and all of these crazy collabs, I feel like that that was a really big curveball for me. I feel like a lot of brands, a lot of brands, I think even Bobby Brown or whatever did a nostalgia type collab. I just feel like all of the random collabs with companies is a big curveball in my opinion. Like the, um, the Chipotle, was that this year? I don't know if that was this this year, but you know, the Chipotle with Elf, that's like, was a weird release in my opinion. Um, but yeah, anyways. What was the biggest letdown snooze fest of the year? <sighs> biggest letdown or snooze fest. I think Tarte as a brand was a big letdown and snooze fest this year. I don't, I, I don't know if that really counts, but as a brand, Tarte, in my opinion, has been releasing really boring palettes and I really do like Tarte and I like their formula but they are a big snooze fest and I don't feel like they're releasing anything that interests me. A couple years ago they did and there's a few palettes that they released that were limited time with that um, turtle palette. I still really kind of want that. Um, that like made me want to buy Tarte but now not so much. You know, I don't know. I know that these are not, I'm not answering these like in the traditional way. So I'm sorry if that bothers you. What was the best holiday release this year? You guys, I didn't buy a single holiday release. Um, I don't think, I don't think I brought, um, I'm trying to think like any of the Halloween releases or anything. Um, I did buy... I did buy this, the Witch It's Almost Time Creature Cosmetics uh, palette, which I hate this brand and I haven't used mm. it. Um, so that, um, my, I, I don't know if that was a holiday release either. So honestly, I didn't buy any holiday releases. Now the ones that I wanted was that Nomad European, Haunted European release. Ugh. I really kind of want that. I think it looks beautiful. I really kind of like the Rudolph release from ColourPop. I'm trying to think of like Halloween releases, but I can't. Um, the Lunar Beauty Spellbook too. That was kind of interesting to me. Um, what else? Halloween was so far away and there were so many Halloween releases and there were a lot that I wanted and I can't even remember them now which means I'm glad I didn't get them because I didn't need them but the Haunted European one mm -hmm. um oh the elf release uh with Makeup Revolution that one really makes me interested and I really want the BH Cosmetics holiday palette that they released this year the big one I forgot what it was called um the PR list or something not the PR list I don't know the the new 30 pan one that they released I kind of want that one um but I'm not going to spend $30 on it or 29 so I'm just kind of waiting for it to go on sale 
but yeah, I didn't buy any holiday releases, so go me. <laughs> um, okay. What was the best collab of 2020? 2020? We're in 2021, right? Okay. I don't think that she um, wrote those questions down right in her description box. Is this 2020? The best collab in 2020? Fuck if I know. I think maybe that Shroud Cosmetics um, collab, it's freaking bats with Betty Jean. Now, I had issues with that palette, but I love the shimmers and the color story so it's not a hundred percent i cannot give that a 10 out of 10 but i think that that was a really good release and i believe that was in 2020 i don't know it's been so long but 2021 best collab i really like the new odin's release with annette judy and i forgot the other person's name which sucks because her palette which was the hummingbird palette was the one that i really wanted and then i really kind of wanted judy's and um but that release and those collabs i think was awesome um i he i'm not a big annette fan sorry annette um but She's just not my style. Um, but uh, I liked those palettes. And out of all of the collabs this year with people, that was a collab that made me go, oh, I want those. I didn't get them because they're expensive. But those collabs made me want. Um... There's a whole bunch of other collabs, like the Blockbuster palette from Hot Topic. I actually bought that. I fucking love it. Um, not so much the quality, but just the fact that they collabed with, like, I don't know, nostalgia, again. Um, there's a lot of collabs that was done this year. Like, a lot. So, I'm just kind of choosing a um, indie brand and people collab versus nostalgia collabs and weird collabs okay like a fucking play-doh collab that's fucking weird all right anyways <laughs> what are your predictions for releases during the next year my predictions fuck if i know um i predict that we're still going to be doing a lot of collabs because i think it's working and i think the reason it's working is because People like me, we and a lot of other people, we have a shit ton of makeup. We have more makeup than we need, and I feel like we're kind of moving away from owning a shit ton of things, but what gets people is nostalgia, because we already have all those fucking color stories, you know? So I think nostalgia is going to continue. I also kind of feel like, I could be wrong, but I feel like more multi-chromes and more duo-chrome palettes are gonna come out in drugstore and um, non-indie brands. I think that um, it's gonna be something that other brands get a hold of and start figuring out are what people are wanting. I think that's gonna be a trend. I think that we might start seeing, and I'm kinda hoping, but I kinda feel like we're gonna start seeing less pressed glitters and palettes um i think that might be a thing um because i feel like we've been sort of moving away from it this year and i think that next year 2022 um, more and more brands will continue to move away from it um trends i, I don't know i think that's what i see happening um, what I would like to see happening is more brands not over release. I am so tired of so many makeup releases. It is just so freaking annoying. Um, it's too much. It's too much to keep, you know, up with. I think it's ridiculous. The market's already oversaturated. Um, it's part of why I really like Lunatic Cosmetics and Menagerie, um, nomad a little bit um shroud 
there's some brands that are indie that are just not over releasing and I appreciate that. Those are the brands that I respect and I like and I feel like I can sit on their releases for a little bit. I actually want that um, blush palette that uh, Lunatic released, which was a holiday release. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm hoping happens. Uh, less releases. Anyways, thank you for watching this video. Remember to go check out Beauty Beatdown. I will put the questions down below. You can, of course, do this tag. I didn't create it. It was, I think, Samantha March and Angelica or Angela <laughs> Nyquist. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Um, but anyways, yes, thank you for being here. See you next time. Bye.